Hello, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Rosie here, and I play Identity V, so you also will. <laughs> That's good, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, I guess we should just pause it for a second. Uh, let's back it up. Let's back it up, lads. Ignore all the memes down there. Um, so, uh... Basically, lads, I, I know we, you and me are still tired of Dead by Daylight. And after, and after a disappointing stream with Freddy last night where we were unable to cook up anything spectacular on him, it just looks like Save the Best for Last is still just going to be what we're doing on him. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Our gimmicks didn't work. But uh, I just decided to take a day, come back to the land of Identity 5. Identity 5. And uh, we're just going to... Show up a little more of the uh, creative character design in this game. Show off some more of the hunters to you lads. Dude, it's just it, it's just so baffling to me. It's just like how well constructed not only the hunters are. We'll do a survivor showcase too. Because the survivors are interesting as well, I, I promise. Like, they're not just dead by daylight. Just, put, just watch one fucking forward montage and then tell me that Identity V takes less skill than Dead by Daylight does. But that's beside the point, lads. It just what what babbles me is just like the the, the how, how creative and in depth how the powers of the killers have multiple layers stacked on top of each other, whereas Dead by Daylight like it's literally just trapper set trap at pallet that power, like that power, that's it, that all he does. Gamekeeper literally has that, and it's like part of an ability. <laughs> it's just like that, that. That shows you the two. That's just the differences right there. In fact, Gamekeeper is basically Deathslinger and Trapper combined. Oh well. So let's go ahead and get started with one of my favorite hunters, killer hunter. But interchangeably, I'm just gonna use him. Nyad. Nyad is so good, lads. This is a this is a killer that has has seen more play at this year's Koa so far than any uh, at least uh, uh, what I've watched than any other. She is not the best character in the game, but she's still up there enough to where she's a very consistent round one choice for a lot of uh, pro players. So this is a killer that is worth investing in your puzzle pieces, and she's actually she's very good. Okay, so basically what she does is she got that spear, she tosses it, and then once she tosses it, she has more movement speed. Okay, that's the basic. She's got to recall it, which is an animation, takes a second, so you can't hit anybody during that. But you'll notice that as you walk, there's, base, there's bamboozle. You'll notice as you walk, you leave behind pools. You leave behind little water pools, okay? Once you, once you like, those are inactive once you, until you draw a circle with your movement. Once you, uh, once those are active, they start, uh, like, kind of like a bitch boy where they start up his meter. And once it gets to 100, the survivor takes damage, okay? So, that's, that's the first basic layers of power. With, with zero presence, that's how it works. Okay, we did unlock her presence, which means we now have access to the second ability, which is a uh, lunge, which we won't use that quite yet. I think we're, I think we'll use it here. And once you uh, recall the trident, it actually does have a hitbox, and uh, if it hits them, it does, I believe, fifty percent of of the water that you need. And the dash, when the dash hits them, it does fifty percent of the water that you, that you need to actually damage somebody. So good stuff. We got our first down. We chaired a uh, prisoner. And we are just looking around. We have tinnitus active at the top left, the ear tinnitus, which is basically just whispers, which we've already discussed how it doesn't, uh, it, it, it turns off when there's a down survivor or a survivor in a chair. We, we, we thought it might have been over there that we could intercept them, but we actually were way off. It was Dancer. She came in. So we're going to go ahead. That was the fucking uh, poor man's dead hard in this game. Did you guys see that? I've yet to see that dead hard you use to cuck me, so it's at least at least has a higher skill ceiling to actually use. I believe your hitbox actually outranges it as well, so they, they can't just press dead hard and they'll dodge your swing. There's our little fucking uh, huge speed boost. So we got some stuff going with Nyad here, lads. Dancer's got she's got her boxes out. She's good. She's getting nerfed because that's how good she is. We have the brutal strength one equip where you get forty percent plus breaking speed. We did lose the tunnel on Prisoner because of what the, uh, our decision to kind of try to be a little aggressive. So that kind of sucks. But we have our blank down the Dancer. Okay. Dancer got that slow box out. So good thing that's getting nerfed. Lol. 
But still, fine tunnel, lads. This we can use. We can tunnel here. So we just throw over the chair. Four snipers. We are sitting very pretty right now. We've got a lot of pressure. We we engaged three of the four survivors so far. So we're, we've had a lot of pressure. Those water pools right there are active. You can know that, like you can tell by the glow. That's how you know they're 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 active pools. And that'll start being relevant throughout the match as we start to build up some more pressure. Just get rid of this fucking music box cancer. Just get rid of it. It's garbage. And I think we shut the prisoner's power off too. Painter, whack him. This painter wasn't very good. He didn't really know what he was doing, which is good. <laughs> it's good for us. Terror shock, which doesn't really matter because we had in injured him already. Here comes, uh, I believe that's Doctor. That's Doctor. That's the only survivor we haven't seen yet. Dancer hits stage two. Free tunnel. Let's get her out. She's out of a really weak tile, so there's really nothing she can do. Go ahead and commit. The slow box does extend our cooldown, but it's okay. Once we chair Dancer, we'll get them all out. Trying to be cute and hit make hit Doctor, which we do. We were trying to hit her with the power for, to avoid a cooldown, but, you know, whatever. Who cares? We are just trying to be cute. We see Prisoner in the area. We're going to go ahead and just give him a window. The shock to save somebody isn't the... They, like you could still like hit them so like he had to like body block it's kind of hard to do though so we, we we went ahead and just checked him to see if he could do it he he got close so but but in the end he, he failed and even then keeping all the survivors off the cypher machines good it is still fine okay we're gonna chair doctor as soon as dancer dies all of our music boxes are destroyed so we didn't have to bother breaking that last one our chair is unfortunately over here so we gotta walk a little bit to get to it Okay. Now, this, see, this is the cool thing about Nyad. We, we tried to execute it before. We weren't successful. We were a little bit overly aggressive. But here, we don't, we don't have tinnitus, so we know there's nobody here. We found them. We actually have line of sight. So now we can actually use our power to help us get back to the chair around the same time as him. We hit him with the power. Recall the thing. Watch this. Boom! A health state. His, his, his water meter got to 100 because we hit him with the dash, and then we hit him with the trident on the way back. So, fucking really good shit right there. I think it's a harpoon, actually. So, we got our down in the slug. Doctors hit stage two. That means we force prisoner in, force him off the cybers. We still have three cybers. We know that the game's pretty much over. We've already won. That play was so, but that play on the fucking uh, painter was super hype, though. Alright, Doctor hit stage 2 because of our aggressive play and our ability to down the painter. So that's good stuff. She's going to be taking a GG. Just like that, that ability to both pressure from a distance and then get then beat the survivor back to the chair is really fucking good on Nyad. It's, uh, it's it just, just like her, her ability to just quickly move. Number one, it just makes her fun to move around with for one. And then two, it's just like, she's good. <laughs> Like she's really good. Go back to we 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 go to hit the cyber because we know this has got the most progress on it. We actually miss them. They're on the right over there, but that just means they're not decoding. They're not doing anything. So it's it, like missing them isn't oh, terrible. Of course we find them because we see those scuff marks. So turn right. We're going right back to them. Look up. Look at where they are. Let's see where they are. Watch this. Uh, we missed the first one, but thankfully we still had enough for the second one. We hit the painter again. We recall the trident again and hit him again with the trident. Good fucking shit, dude. We got that. That's another fucking hell state through our projectile ability to fucking just do that. Like, that's so cool. Those, those shots aren't the most consistent because they're kind of easy to dodge. But once you do get them, they're super hype. We're gonna hit him again. We have CS. We notice we have sixty. We have sixty-two percent water level. Okay. We you see how we do. We have that. So here's what we're gonna do, lads. We don't even have to bother with something high risk. All we gotta do is go around him, draw a circle. Boom. Down. Easy. Easy. We could have recalled the trident, but it's like it's quicker to do that. Like you, just draw a circle around him, and he's fucking sh up shit creek with that with no paddle. Just use that increased movement speed, and you avoid the cooldown. So that's like if you can hit them and get that water level up, like good naiads. What what separates like basic naiads from good naiads? And again, this is just a really good game on my part. I normally don't play this well with her every single time, but uh, what separates the good the the average naiad from the good naiad is that the good naiad is going to be getting way less basic attacks and more fucking water level shenanigans. 
Like, just, like, because, like, that, that's just, that's the character's fucking gimmick. If you just run around with, it, like, you have this, which is cool and stuff, but it's, like, you really need to use your character's water gimmick to, like, really fucking, uh, maximize her potential. Because those are the plays that are going to get you insane value. So we're trying, we're just kind of dicking around because we know we've won already. We're trying to do water shenanigans, in which we have them both. We have them both at above 50% and watch them as they go into the thing. But are both, boom, boom, two hell states down the painter. Fucking amazing, dude. She's so good. Like, like you can't body block her dash because she goes through both survivors. So we took two hell states there with one dash because they were both over 50% water. And the dash does 50% water. So those that was just uh, two fucking hell states right there. Super hype game. Probably my best game is her ever. Like that, that that was that was an abnormally good game out on her from me. So I, that, that's one I definitely wanted to share with y'all. Next next character we're gonna discuss is going to be an older one, but he got a rework and he's actually getting buffs. So we'll talk about the buff. Uh, Wu Chang. I really like good old Wu Chang, man. He's just he he's such an interesting idea. It, it's like you're playing two characters at once. You have White Wu Chang and then Black Wu Chang. White Wu Chang has longer attack range. And, but a slower startup. Black Wu Chang has a uh, smaller attack range, but a faster startup. And then they also have their own powers once they, like, they're two different killers. And then you can teleport with the umbrella to swap between the two forms. It's basically two killers. It's, it's, they're really cool. And we'll talk about their own abilities as they come up. But the the umbrella thing is the umbrella teleport is just really good. Like it gives this character a base teleportation, which is really good and helps him move around the map. I believe I, I believe there was one Wu Chang picked at Koa so far. Yeah, he didn't do well though. He got one kill, I think. That umbrella play, we couldn't really we were moving slightly faster. I believe, and so that, that's why we did that right there, and we could threaten with White Wu Chang. We missed our blink because we're really good at Identity 5, trust me, bro. Barmaid's using her power right now. She actually heals up in chase. We had a window to actually hit her there, I think. We, if, we, if we had hit our blink and then hit the bell, we could have actually downed her before that happened. So the only reason she got that off is because we misplayed twice. Good stuff, bro. Good stuff. Okay, so like she missed time to pallet drop, and, like, that, like, extends your hitbox. You're like, palettes just aren't as good in this game. So, she done fucked up. I think she thought we were vaulting the window. I don't know why she would have thought that, but I think that's what she thought. Because that, 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 that's what explains why she did what she did. We thought it was a two-cypher kite, though. Like, seriously, guys. Like, just because killers are better, like, do, that survivors certainly aren't helpless. They are probably still the power roll. Especially right now. It's been a very survivor-sided Koa for the most part. A lot of draws, and the, it, 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 very rarely does the killer get more than th more than three or four. Geisha got one. There's been a couple. Okay, so th that that's Black with Shanks power, though. That's like the, basically think of shock therapy. That's kind of what it is. We haven't really been going over the powers. It's called like Weeping Bell or some shit, but it, it's basically shock therapy. It goes out, they can't pull pallets, they have to like hit a skill check as they run. You transform into White Wu Chang, and now that we have unlocked presence, we have the, the we have the uh ability to uh that green stuff, you'll see it come up again. Well let me let's just ooh. You'll see it come up again. Let's go ahead and just play it back for a second. So that that's that's the bell we were talking about. That's the dead hard, but that didn't really work, did it? Okay, so when we throw the thing, okay, we just down the wilding. But we just down the wild. So when we turn into white Wu Chang, here's what happens. We spawn in that green shit that comes up. If they're caught in that, they can't vault windows or drop pallets. I don't think they can use their power either. So, like, it's basically like an ability nullifier, which is really, really good. And then this ability here is called uh, Siphon Soul. You basically get a speed boost. If you are somehow able to siphon up the entire soul, it's basically like the, the, the same effects happen as uh, when you spawn in right there. So they can't vault windows, drop pallets, etc., etc. But that's not what it's really used for. It's mostly just used as a speed boost. But what's good, what's really good, though is uh, they're actually buffing this. Because a lot of times, as White Wu Chang, you'll get right behind them, and you're just kind of waiting for the Siphon Soul to end so you can hit them. But now, if you've been using it 
past 70%, you can actually cancel it, which will allow you to get faster attacks as White Wu Chang, which so that's, that's actually really good. So that, that, that buff that they're giving him soon is actually really cool. Okay, Prisoner put himself in harm's way. Go ahead and just take the hit. You got to spread those injuries around. Wilding's down. We have time to make this happen. Get rid of the electric shit. We know she's still here. Because we just we haven't really seen scuff marks that take us any direction. Okay, here comes Sipe and Soul. Get a just get the speed boost, wrap around, perfect timing, boom, terror shock, easy. It's it's a super cool ability, bro. And the fact that it's getting buffed means that plays like that, what you ju you just watched, are going to be much more consistent on this character. So that's going to be something he it really it really enjoys. So, chair her. Chair the bower maid. Alright, she's at stage two. Wilding is actually to our left. We actually heard the, the cypher beeping, which is why we're going to head over there. He doesn't know if we see him, but we heard the cypher being worked on. That's how we know he's there. But we're still... We're going to switch forms. Now, that basically is... There's the... Once you get max presence, the range extends... Basically, you, if you can predict the Siphon Soul, you can also predict that one. It's basically a big, giant, giant version of Shock Therapy. It's kind of like Static Blast, but also not like that, because like it also works as a Shock Therapy. Wilding's down. We have no interest in tunneling him. Go ahead and throw out the Weeping Bell or whatever the fuck it is. I think Weeping Bell might be Race fucking Power. I don't know what it's called. It's, it's a bell. Just use the bell. Stop her. That's Antiquary, and she's super good right now. She is super good right now. I finally played some good ones, so I know I know that she's actually really good. Okay, so go ahead and use the blink down her. Two, one, two of the blink and the power there from out, out of Black Witch Hang, which is super cool. This is a good showcase game for him because I think we get it down with pretty much all of the abilities that the character has. Like, we get hits and downs with pretty much every single ability. Okay, we see scuff marks. We consider trying to go for a teleport here. But we just say nah. But yeah, we pretty much have the game won. So we're kind of playing a little nicer to him. If we were playing meta, we would go to fucking just get Antiquarian out of the game. But we're going to see what this prisoner is made out of a little bit. So to took care of him. He's going to get the speed boost. And now we're going to go. We are going to uh, just make up some of this distance. We don't want to vault. So we're just going to go ahead and throw the umbrella to transform into White Wuchang. Boom. He can't drop that. So he's basically at a dead zone as long as that green energy is around him. So basically, yeah, trans we hit we hit the teleportation within the range. Kind of like night, but like you actually get something when you do the teleport, right? And you place yourself in the right spot, you actually get something. <laughs> I know, right? Crazy. So we see that the wild thing is picked up. And so our first instinct is to just kind of go back. We don't have a tinnitus, so our first instinct is to just kind of take a random guess to try to head back over there where we knew Wildling was. Okay, still no tinnitus. Our play now is to head back to the chair, which we can do because our power is going to get off cooldown in 20 seconds. So we can throw out another umbrella and change back into White Wu Chang, or just just depends on if we get there or not. We're just going to keep going there, which I think we're actually going to make it, so... Antiquarian has to come in because Wildling is is injured, so he can't he can get here on stuff, but he can't get the rescue. Go ahead, use the bell. The dead hard didn't do anything for. Her. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure dead hard is still good. Antiquarian's power just got canceled by the prisoner shock. Like we would have been stunned a little longer there. So just go ahead and chair the uh, the uh, the dead hard. I'm sure it has utility. I see it at Koa, so I know it's fucking okay and usable. It's just the skill gap is definitely a lot fucking higher to using it effectively in this game. You can't just press dead hard and expect it to do things for you in this game. So good shit. Use the siphon soul catch up to him. We'd be able to cancel it right now. See how we're just waiting? Did you see that? Like that's what they're buffing on him right there. Did you see how we're just waiting for the siphon soul to end? There, there's nothing you can do about that. You have to just kind of wait until it's over. The buff is going to make him much more lethal. Like, that, that that's definitely a down post-patch coming up. So, and like that's something that I always wish he had. Even, like, games before this. Because, like, I've played Blue Chang before, obviously. But, like, just, like, that's stuff I always wish he had. And, like, Siphon Soul right now isn't bad. Like, Wu Chang's actually viable right now. He can, he's a, he's a, he's kind of a feast or famine character, but like he got played at Koa. 
He was played at Coa last year too, I believe. Like he gets played a couple times at Coa every year, so it's not he's not garbage. He's a solid mid tier. Wildling used his pig to kind of dash forward. Wildling is kind of an annoying survivor, but you kind of also don't have to deal with them. Like that, that, that's the thing about all these rescuer class survivors. They're annoying survivors and they have kind of undoubtable powers, but like you kind of also don't really have to ever deal with them. Like the mercenary, you don't you don't really have to deal with them. And we'll showcase that Wildling's a little undoubtable. We're gonna try to challenge him just to see if we can do it. I'm gonna like I always like to I always like to do things you shouldn't do, lads, just to see if you can do it. Wildlings here is gonna jump on his pig. The pig has two shots. We already got one off. You don't have to we we totally trashed. That was like the worst bell of our lives. See how Wildling has bastard movement speed and the pig, and then he also has the dash. So like maybe Wu Chang will be able to challenge him with white Wu Chang when Siphon Soul is buffed. But, like, chasing the Wildling is just kind of a waste of time. It's better to let him sit on the map because he's got, like, a negative... He has, like, the biggest decoding penalty for existing in the game. Like, I believe it's, like, negative 40. Like, he gets he gets negative 40% decoding. Like, he's a really bad decoder. Slightly off. If We, we would have just downed him if we had hit that teleport correctly. We noticed that uh, we're chasing him and, like, there's still no tinnitus. So we know that, but we already know right now the anti. We know where the antiquarian is, and so he's gonna board that. We decide we were we were gonna keep chasing him, but we just immediately say fuck it. Who gives a shit? We're just gonna take our teleport, and then we're just gonna go end the game and get antiquarian. But yeah, but it's like the but it's overall though. As we get this last down, like having two killers and one killer is like honestly really cool. It's a really cool power. She. He's always been one of my favorites, just because it's like you get to pick two, you you pick you get to play two characters at once, <laughs> so it's it, it's kind of neat. So we share her, Wilding gets Hatch, and that's kind of GG. Just kind of throw it out there. It's just we're dicking around at the end of the match. So there you go, lads. He just gets Hatch, so who cares? Last match. Another older character that has been reworked a couple times, that'd be your boy Feaster. If Feaster is actually based on Haster the Yellow from my boy H.P. Lovecraft's work, so I mean, it actually is him. Like, it's a one-for-one. One. Like, he is Haster the Yellow. So I always always love to see that. He plays kind of clunky. And like, if he looks clunkier than some of the other characters, that's because he kind of is. He's certainly not bad, though. He's still, like, he got, he, he got played at Koa, too. Like, these characters get played, dude. They're, I'm getting, they're not meta staples. You're not going to see them every single round at Koa. But, like, they these like these mid-tiers, they get pulled out at Koa every once in a while. I believe, let's see, Disciple was played. I'm trying to think about it. The only character that wasn't played at Koa of my 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 two killer showcases was, was Smiley. And even then, he was actually on the table for one of the rounds. Like, the, the commentators were saying that the guy has a Smiley and he could go him. So... Like, like, even Smiley, who is honestly probably one of the weaker characters we've showcased, uh, he's still not horrendous. Like, is he viable? I mean, if he is, it's very, very close. Like, he's not very good. But, he used to be the third best killer in the game, fun fact. Like, when I started this game for the first time ever, he was an A-tier. <laughs> How times change. Okay, um... So we're kind of getting bopped by this cowboy. Feaster's early game is super weak. Once you, you Priester is somebody you gotta unlock presence on him. Like he, he's a whole new character. We know that that toy he used the toy thing, but he he can't he can't do what Toy Merchant can do with it. We know that he I know that Toy Merchant cannot do that catapult. So, we hit the toy merchant there with the tentacle, so we kind of get that projectile. She cannot go right, she's kind of zoned off there. There's her dead hard, didn't do anything for her, but she did dodge our attack, so good for her. The dead hard is not why she dodged the attack, when she dodged the attack is we fucked up. We tried to whack her, but it's like, eh, who cares? 
we we that was kind of a long chase. It was a two cypher kite, so we're gonna go make sure we get basement just to kind of get ourselves back in. That one in there is dinging, so that was basically a three cypher kite. That is not what you want to see coming into the game. But killer has uh, killer hunter has more comeback potential than killer. Getting this basement chair is actually super big. Okay, we see them all right there. We can just put a tentacle up. And if we put this tentacle up, they kind of have to stop. They kind of have to stop and, and, and get a, get like away from each other. Uh, phone controls or phone controls. That's why we kind of slipped right there. Phone controls being, but like the game's not perfect, guys. Phone controls are pretty bad. All four survivors are here, which means no decoding is happening right now. Beautiful. That's what we want. If there's if they're body blocking, no decoding, lads. We he is. This is a this is a trap room. He's trapped in this room. You cannot enter through that room. You can duck down and then walk out from the top. But you cannot enter that room. And It's a trap room. So, GG. Cowboys just got wrecked. Okay. we Toy Merchant was almost about to catapult again. But as she was flying, lads... I, I, I can't... I don't know if her hurt box extends when she's flying. But, like, basically, we stuffed her. We legit just stuffed her. So, we, the chair's right there. We're going to go ahead and take the chair over the slug. It'll force the survivors out if they are there to try to save Cowboy. We hit Doctor with a tentacle. That's good enough. She'll go heal because she can he she, she can heal herself. She's actually a super good character, too. Because she can heal herself in 25% increments. Like, she doesn't have to heal again because in this matchup. And in, certain, in other matchups, like Bon Bon, she does. But, like, in this matchup, she doesn't have to heal herself again if she doesn't want to. Okay. So she's still here. We go for the tentacle. Didn't hit her. We we got to play a little more patiently there. We hit the chair. That was the... It, you never want to see that happen. You never want to hit the chair. Okay. We could have hit Toy Merchant again. We're still on this tunnel. They're still... if they're As long as they're running with us, this is the same thing you see in Dead by Daylight sometimes. As long as they're running with us, they're giving you free slowdown by not doing any cybers. Like, yes, it's like it they like you should be body blocking in both games to an extent. To do this though, to actually run, like uh, the paint the, the, the prisoner in the first game was doing because the game was just kind of over already. These guys, there's still four survivors left. They need to get their asses on fucking cypher machines. But they're just not doing it. So they're they they, like, they let this play be a bigger slowdown than it realistically should have been. Like they probably should have won this game. Because the first kite was actually good, and, and, and that they wasted a little too much time healing, and then their altruism was, was the better of them. So there's perfumer. Okay, she's got. We don't know how many. She's got two perfume bottles left, but she's also not respecting us very much. It's because just because of how she's trying to kind of tight kite us. We kind of go. But she she did do a good transition there. We almost hit her though with our extended range. She's in an awkward spot though. She's kind of stayed there too long. She went for she wanted to get the pallets done and be a little greedy, but because our presence is maxed, we have a basically just a decreased cooldown with how we can place tentacles. So when Beaster's at max presence, you really can't really tight kite them at all, or else we can just skip. We can get tentacles up super fucking quickly. Alrighty, lads. So we got a uh, cowboy's dead, and then basically because they are off cipher machines so long, we they, they they let us swing the game back to our advantage. We can hear that one beeping in there, so we decide to be a little cute. We decide to place a sneaky tentacle behind her. They're kind of threatening her a little bit, because we can still hit her. We can hit her with that. So we're threatening multiple survivors at once, even from the duration of the chair. Push doctor back towards our tentacle. She should have probably played a little more aggro there and went for the rescue, but because she chose to, like, respect our basic attack, she ended up getting downed. So she probably should have just ran forward there and forced us to hit that basic attack. Down Toy Merchant, end the game, GG. So it's like, they definitely had options to kind of counter the Beaster a little bit more, and then they played a little overly altruistic. But overall, the tentacle strikes were pretty good there. Once we got rolling... Once we got rolling there, you, you can definitely see that the character has potential because you can't just fucking tight kite him. It just it, you can't do it. He will get you. So those are those are the three games we wanted to showcase today, lads. Some good shit, good killers. It's just it's so good. The game's so good, bro. Get it? It's free. And the grind is doable. Like I unlocked all of these characters over time, both killer and survivor through grinding, just grinding for free. They, the game is very generous with in-game currency. So it's like, 
as long as you are, like, into the game, like, you can have your first couple killers, uh, Smiley and Gamekeeper. And Gamekeeper, in particular, is a mid-tier, I believe. It has a lot of death. So he's a really good early purchase. It, it, and it, so it's just, like, it's 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 doable. <laughs> you can do it without, like, I have not dropped one dime on this game, guys. I have not dropped one dime on this game. And I have, like, a decent character pool. And it's only getting bigger because we're gonna as we keep playing, we're gonna unlock more and more. I believe my next killer is going to be uh uh fuck, who was I gonna get next? I don't know who was maybe Spider is who I was thinking about next, but it, it don't matter. Uh I'm I'm rambling. GG's boys.